Hey guys, and welcome back to the Mandalorian cosplay series. Today, we're going to be making some leg armor and belts. So, last week, I showed you a technique to make the torso armor, shoulders, and wrist gauntlets. So today, we're going to be continuing pretty much in the same way to make the leg armor. The first step, like last time, is going to be patterning out what we want our armor to look like just on paper first. Now, something interesting to note is that in Season 2, he actually gets a new right thigh piece and a left knee. This is never explained in the series, he just starts off the new season with a couple new pieces of armor, but make sure you're looking at the right reference images, because the season 1 Beskar, the right thigh piece is kind of still beat up, and then in season 2 he gets a new one, so that's what we're gonna make. Something kind of funny to me is that I think the best reference images I've found of his leg armor actually comes from the Mandalorian in Fortnite, ironically enough, but they've got some nice images of his armor with good lighting, which the season two poster just doesn't show as clearly. So, yeah. I drew out the shapes that I could see just freehand, and then I refined my lines with a Sharpie and cut them out. If you want to build along, these patterns are going to be available for free, linked in the description below, along with the chest plate and shoulders from last episode, because some people in the comments were saying that they wanted the patterns, so I got you. But now it is time to trace them onto foam. I traced the base shape onto half inch EVA floor mat foam and then it has kind of a raised border and a line down the middle, so I cut that out of some 4mm foam. I glued them together with some contact cement. If you don't know what contact cement is, you have not watched my other videos. So I finished this one, which I made out of the 10mm floor mat foam as a base, and I want this one to be the same thickness as that, but it's got these like grooved uh, panel lines which don't go all the way like 10 millimeters down so it would kind of be tricky if you made the base out of one piece like that so I think instead I'm going to just layer up multiple layers of uh, some thinner foam that I have. I cut the base shape out of some 6 millimeter foam and then I cut basically that same thing again out of the 2 millimeter thin foam but I cut some rectangles out of it so that when I glue them on top of each other it creates those recessed areas. This also has a border out of the 4 millimeter foam and then a line down the middle out of my remaining 6 millimeter foam. If you don't have all these different thicknesses of foam by the millimeter lying around, that's totally fine. You can always make do by layering up more and more layers of the thin stuff or find another material that works well for you. All right, so these guys are fully put together. I did curve them a little bit uh, by heating them up with a heat gun, but I am really liking how they're looking. And now that these are put together, we are going to paint them. You probably already know how. It's the same way I've painted every other piece of this armor. First, I sealed them with a black Plasti Dip and then with a metallic silver color. To weather them, like usual, I covered them with black shoe polish, wiping some away. Alright, after weathering, I hit these with a final coat of clear gloss spray paint, and now they're done. I know I went through them rather quickly, but they were just a continuation of last episode, so now we're going to move on to some new stuff. Okay, so it is time for Mando's belt. So what I'm going to start with is this brown belt. You may recognize it from my Captain America video. I did go back to the store where I bought these to try to buy some more, but they didn't have any. They had Christmas decorations instead. So we're going to repurpose this and uh, maybe I'll replace it later. 
But as for the buckle on the belt, I was just going to make a silver piece out of some foam and either attach it with some Velcro or a magnet so that you can close it. Until I found this belt at the thrift store. This has a super cool looking shiny belt buckle that actually has a ratcheting mechanism inside so when you put it on you can do that and it stays closed. How cool is that? So I'm going to be using this for my belt. Uh, it's not 100% accurate but I like it. I cut the buckle off of the brown belt and then to make it a little bigger I glued a long strip of 2mm foam behind it. Then I cut off just the ends of the white belt and glued them onto mine so that it still leaves a little bit of room for you to adjust it. And with this glued together, I know it's kind of weird looking, but it is a functional belt that is still adjustable without having the, the holes like a typical belt. It's more Star Wars-y and uh, I really like it. So now that we got the fundamentals out of the way, we are just going to continue building on this with all the details. The first detail is this little pouch he has. So I made this out of a couple different thicknesses of foam, just folding and gluing them together to make a box basically. I made this little pouch out of foam to hang on his belt there. And possibly the best part about it is it fits my phone inside. And that's not a coincidence. I measured it to do this uh, because I'm not sure if I'm going to have pockets. I haven't made the pants yet. That'll be in the next episode. Uh, but they might be covered up with armor pieces. So this will be good. It can hang on the belt and it'll have my phone in it. Next to that, he has some little bombs, which I've been excited about because I have an idea to make these actually light up. It starts with this candle tea light. Turns on just like that. Isn't that nice? And you might remember that I actually used these to make some Infinity Stones uh, back for Avengers Infinity War, but I've had a whole bunch of them lying around, not doing anything with them, and they're about the size of the little bombs he's got hanging on his belt, so we're gonna use them. If I can get the candle part off of it, then we are left with just one LED and a coin battery on it, nice and self-contained, so we can decorate this to make it look right. To attach them to the belt, I wanted to use some magnets. You could use Velcro, just something so that they can stick on, but he can obviously take them off. And I was going to put one of these little neodymium magnets on either side, but then I realized the coin battery inside of this actually sticks to the magnet, so I only need these on the belt. It won't be quite as strong of a, of a connection between the magnets uh, with the coin battery, but it's good enough. It, it holds on there. I can take it off. You can throw it. Maybe don't throw it. I don't know. Depends on how hard. Could break, but it's going to be covered in foam. So let's do that. I cut a length of the 4mm foam just to wrap around into a circle, kind of like the candle piece, but then built onto it with another strip of foam that I cut some lines into it and opened them up with a heat gun so that it would have that cool piece. I'm sanding this piece of red lighting gel, it's the same stuff I used for the eyes on my Ant-Man helmet and I'm just going to glue a nice circle of that on the top of these, which should look pretty cool. And then I found these random plastic rings uh, in my junk box, don't know I've had them forever, but I will just glue that on the top to finish it off. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to glue uh, either of these on yet. I should probably wait until after they're spray painted silver. I cut a back plate for them to sit on just more 6mm foam with another piece that will glue onto it eventually. And then I engraved some spots for me to super glue the magnets into. Then I also just put a piece of duct tape over it to keep them in there. I don't know how strong these magnets are going to attach. Okay, so the only piece I think I am missing on the belt is his gun holster. But I don't think I want to make that yet. 
because I haven't made his blaster pistol, obviously. That should be in a future episode, but I don't want to make the holster until I know what size the gun is going to be. Because I've got like Han Solo's DL44 over here, but the holster for it needed to fit exactly. So it's the perfect shape. And I don't know what shape uh, Mando's blaster is going to be, but in the weapons video, I think I will also make the holster. So, if you're watching weeks in the future, uh, it should be linked here somewhere. Maybe up in the corner I'll make something pop up, unless I forget in a few weeks, but yeah. Now we can move on, well, move up from his belt to his bandolier. The bandolier I made really quickly, just out of a long strip of four millimeter foam. I marked out a few shapes on it, like where those tubes are gonna go, added a few other layers and details, and that's it. All right, with the belt and the bandolier and a number of other pieces completed, I think we are ready to paint. I am going to be hitting most of this with a brown spray paint. Uh, but then a few select detail pieces with the silver because they're supposed to be metal. I did my best to not glue on any of the additional pieces until we paint them except for the belt buckle because I wanted a functional belt but we will need to mask off the buckle because I want it to stay silver. So while that is drying, I'm going to work on those little silver tubes that he has, uh, armor cartridges or what have you, but I'm going to be using this half inch PAX pipe. Uh, it's a bit thinner than the half inch PVC pipe, but I think it's the size I want. And I'm just going to cut it up into small sections, probably on my scroll saw, just because I don't own those PVC cutters. Uh, but you can cut this stuff on anything, any type of saw, and you don't need power tools. Hacksaw will do you just fine. These needed some thin foam details on either side, but I made sure only to fully glue a cap onto one end so that the other could stick into my painting apparatus. This is my elaborate stand made out of uh, pencils and old markers, but I think we're ready to spray paint these silver. A couple of these pieces got shoe polished because they're still supposed to be metal. What I really like about these bombs is I didn't put a bottom on them so that the magnet can still get it and you can still change the battery at any time. But as for the light in there, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. Turn it off, you can turn it on, and it attaches to the bell. That was a success. I added a snap into the pouch, but you could also use Velcro. And then I just glued everything onto the belt in the appropriate spots, and boy, this thing really came together. All right, so I've got both belts done, but I need a way to attach them together. So I am going to do that with one more belt from the thrift store. Uh, it was just a dollar or two, but it's got these little rectangular rings in there, which will work well. And to loop through that, I cut these little strips of the two millimeter craft foam, painted them brown already so that we can just put them through, loop it, put it together. I cut off just those rings from the belt, but don't be concerned if you were worried that I was wasting an entire belt. This is going into my junk box and I'll use it probably on another belt in the future. I fed the foam strips through, gluing one end to the bandolier and looping the other around the belt. And there you have it, a completed bandolier. Or should I say, mandolier. <laughs> See what I did there? I am extremely happy with how this whole thing turned out. It's a lot of different pieces that came together, but it's still pretty adjustable because it's got to go over uh, the costume with some specific armor pieces. So you can slide these, you can adjust the belt, bigger or smaller, and I'm very happy with it. All right, so moving on from that, 
we have a few more armor pieces to make. Yup, if you're wondering why I broke up the video this way instead of doing them before, it's because um, these ones need to attach onto the belt, so I wanted to have that built, and also I was kind of getting tired of repeating the same armor process, and I wanted to make the belt instead. But, we're working on them now. All right, once again, drawn it out. It's a pretty simple shape. I'm tracing these onto six millimeter foam. You could use floor mats, but these are gonna go underneath the belt and on the sides of the legs, so I want them a little thinner. I cut part of either side off and then glued them on kind of offset, lowered a little bit, Almost like you did a really bad job at a regular flush seam, but I actually wanted that look this time. Okay, these came together in a matter of minutes. They'll go right about here on the belt. And by the way, that's why I wanted my phone in a little pouch because this covers my pocket. But now there's just one last armor piece to make in this video and that is the knee. Yes, one, because he only has a left knee piece that I think he gets in season two, because it looked like he had something similar in his original suit, but then when he gets his best scar armor, he does not have a knee piece at all. And then in season two, like I said earlier, he gets the new right thigh and left knee. And if you're wondering why I'm making that now instead of earlier, it's because it's gonna be the same color as the side pieces. I drew out the shape, and it is kind of a funky shape this time, but I traced it onto the 6mm foam, cut it out and heat formed it so that it would fit around my knee, glued on those little almost fin pieces onto the side, and a little rectangle near one of them. All three of these armor pieces are built and ready to be painted. Now I'm going to seal them with the black Plasti Dip like I did on the rest of the armor, but they're actually not that same silver color as the rest of the armor. They're kind of a light blue. So I picked up this light bluish gray color and that's what we're gonna hit them with. Because these are supposed to be painted metal, they needed a little extra hand painting the two side pieces I dry brushed with some silver, that's about it. I was kind of lazy and then I covered most of it up with the shoe polish. The knee pad was a little more advanced. I painted some selective splotches with black and then went back over those almost entirely with the silver. So it kind of gives the look that uh, multiple layers of paint are peeling away in some areas. But it was a little too bright, almost looks like a cartoon, so I dulled it all down with a layer of shoe polish, of course. There's just one last detail to finish these up, and it says little knee darts. So for those, I didn't have anything that looked quite right in my junk box. So I just went down the plumbing aisle at the hardware store, and what I ended up finding was these little half-inch PEX plugs, which is purely a coincidence, but I used half-inch PEX pipe that these go into for the ammo cartridges on his bandolier. And I made foam plugs for that, but the, the real ones are gonna be the knee darts. I attached the side leg pieces straight onto the belt, as you can see, but as for the thigh pieces and the knee piece, I think I'm going to attach them to the pants, which I will make in next week's episode. So make sure you come back for that. Uh, I think I'm gonna try to make most of the base clothes that go underneath it, along with stuff I've, uh, I haven't made so far, like the boots, the gloves, hoping to make all that next time. So. Thank you very much for watching this episode of the Mandalorian Cosplay Series. If you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and share it with a friend. If you have any questions on this build, make sure to leave them in the comments section down below. Follow me on Instagram for some behind the scenes updates, at the Costume Kid. And as always, make sure to subscribe right here for new videos.